Take a few deep, long, and in-out breaths. Ventilate the body. Think of all the pores in your skin opening up so the breath energy can come in without any kind of obstruction at all. Come in, go out. You don't have to force it in or squeeze it out. Just trying to open the breath channels as much as you can. We're trying to get the mind to settle down. And to settle down, it needs a good, comfortable place to stay. Otherwise, we wouldn't want to settle and keep migrating. Like an animal, they can't find a good nesting spot. If the mind doesn't have a good nesting spot, it won't get any rest. And just keep traveling around, like those arctic terns that fly to the North Pole, fly to the South Pole, back and forth. Always on the move. And although we may think we get something out of the minds moving around, it does need a place to stay. And so you have to look very carefully at what's preventing it from settling down. In some cases, it's just the physical sensations of the body here in the present moment. They're not comfortable. The breath energy is squeezed, it's tight, it's cut off. So you try to think about the breath in a way that makes it comfortable, soothing, energizing if you want energy, relaxing if you want to get rid of some tension. In other words, try to get a sense of how to adjust these sensations that we have in the body in such a way that it feels good to be right here. So there's not a lot of conflict, not a lot of tightness. The different parts of the body breathing together, try to get a sense of where things are out of balance or out of harmony in the body. And think about breathing in ways that bring them back into harmony. If long breathing doesn't feel good, you can try shorter breathing, or more shallow, faster, slower, heavier, lighter. Get a sense of what feels good right now. That's one side of settling in. The other side, of course, has to do with the attitudes in your mind. We carry a lot of things around with us that are like sharp stones. Make it hard to settle down. As soon as you settle down in the present moment and clear away your normal chatter of the mind, these other issues come up. So sometimes the meditation has to deal more with what's hanging on in the mind. Your fears about things, your worries about things, your concerns about things. One of the best th ways of cutting through that is reminding yourself again and again that whatever you're concerned about, whatever you're worried about, you really don't know what's going to happen. But you do know that whatever happens, you're going to need a lot of mindfulness and a lot of alertness. You're going to need good strength of mind in order to deal with it. And that's something you can prepare for. That's something you can develop, like you're doing right now. In other words, you have to work on the attitude of the mind so it'll be more willing to settle down. So see, it's the value of settling down, that this is an important skill. You're focusing on the breath. You're not just getting the breath. You're getting a lot of good qualities of mind. The mindfulness is what keeps reminding you to stay here, stay here. Don't wander off. The alertness watches what's actually happening. And the discernment figures out what's useful to stay with and what's not. If you're having trouble sticking with what you know is what you should be doing, then the discernment tries to figure out strategies for convincing you 
yes, this is a good place to be, this is a good place to stay, this is a good activity to be in, engaged in. And it's in this way that these various qualities help the mind to settle down, bring it into a state of ease, serenity, concentration. You have to trust that the mind can be developed and that it's important for it to be developed so that we'll have the strength and it will have the resources to deal with whatever comes up, whatever it is that you're worried about, whatever it is you're concerned about. So the element of conviction does have to come into the practice. Some people try to pre present the Buddhist teachings as being totally scientific, not requiring any investment on your part until you're ready. But if you wait until everything gets proved to you before you practice, well, it's never going to come. Because there are certain things you can prove to yourself only by doing them. If you waited to study medicine and only after someone could prove it to you that you could be a doctor, well, you'd never, you'd never get studied in medicine. You'd never get any practice in medicine. It would never happen. There are certain things that are true only when you're convinced that the, the possibility is there. So we have the example of the Buddha and the Sangha. This is why we chant about the Buddha and the Sangha every night, to remind ourselves there are people who've followed this path before us, and they all say that, yes, when the mind is well trained, it takes care of every issue in life. There's nothing you have to fear that can't be handled by the mind when it's well trained. So give yourself that encouragement that this is the way to find true happiness, by training the mind, developing the qualities that will be able to deal with whatever comes up. Because even though there may be pain and aging, illness and death, the mind doesn't have to suffer from that pain. There may be pain and separation from the people and things we love, but the mind doesn't have to suffer from that pain. The actual suffering that weighs the mind down is all the unnecessary thrashing around that the mind engages in. And that can be tamed, that can be brought to stillness. When the mind stops thrashing around like that, then no matter what happens, the mind itself doesn't have to suffer. It's like seeing a pit of burning coals. You know that it's hot. But as long as you don't go into the pit of burning coals, it's, it's not going to burn you at all. Our problem is we go jumping right in all the time. So giving the mind a place to settle down like this and working on whatever is necessary to get it to settle down, both in terms of how the body feels and in terms of the irritants in the mind, when you can iron those out. Then you develop that place where you can stay, where you don't have to go jumping into the pit again and again and again, the way we've been doing for who knows how long. This is why the Buddha said that to get the mind to settle down, you need what he calls directed thought and evaluation, looking at the situation in the mind, looking at the situation in the body, and then making adjustments. So the mind and the body can fit together snugly. So it feels good to stay right here in the sense of the body as you're sitting here, the sense of the energy flowing through the body, you know, in the sense that whatever thoughts do come up in the mind, you can just watch them dissolve away, like the clouds that go over the mountains into the desert. As soon as they go off over the crest of the mountains, they dissolve into the air. Allow whatever thoughts or worries you may be carrying around in the mind to dissolve in just that way. Look at them and as you look at somebody else's strange thoughts.
Don't let yourself get sucked in by all the arguments that would say, you've got to think about this, you've got to worry about that. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to worry about it. And the mind needs time to rest so it can gain the strength that will actually be able to deal with the situations that will come up. There are a lot of unexpected situations in life, but there are a few things we do know will happen. There will be aging, there will be illness, there will be death. It's not a happy prospect, but if the qualities of the mind are well trained, there's really nothing to fear. And if you can maintain that attitude with conviction, that's a huge step for getting the mind to settle down right there.